All right. Everyone, I hope there is anyone. Can't check because it's pre recorded. Um, open Sousa Docks, Tame the Beast, Make It a Friend. I am Adrian. Uh, along with me on this lovely front page is Attila, who unfortunately won't be able to um, present the talk with me, but I mean, that's okay. Uh, and by the way, Till I, if you listen to this and you disagree with something, it's your fault, man. You can't blame anyone else. <laughs> okay, so who are we? So Attila lives in Indonesia. He's a dev DevOps and Assist admin, uh, and he's also an entrepreneur, and he works for the company uh, he has founded. And um, I live in Switzerland. I'm always through my PhD in. It's a long story, but long story short, it's about concepts and linguistics. It doesn't really interest us today. Um, and I'm a Python and Haskell fanboy. On the menu today, uh, now and how it started, because uh, yeah, it's quite, it's been quite a journey. Uh, we've started doing documentation for OpenSUSE last autumn, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so yeah, that's going to be the bio moment of this talk, and then we will uh, ride the tumbleweed wave, and I will explain to you, but I'm sure you already agree, um, why wikis are a trap, and then we shall, if you will, um, discuss the um, vision we have of uh, moving the docs under maintainership, as opposed to just doing things on wikis and on um, these type of uh, hit-and-run platforms where everyone can say everything. Um, and I will explain why it didn't solve all of our problems. And then we will talk about saving the world, nothing less and nothing more, and why documentation is underrated and why you, and that is a plural and also a singular and it covers everyone everywhere at any time in the universe why you should help us or at least uh, be motivated to help us so a look back started late November 2020 it started well and that doesn't mean it it <laughs> it, it, it that doesn't mean uh, now is worse but um, if you look at um, our contribution graphs, uh, I mean, we had a lot of different people who have helped. Uh, of course, you can't expect people to commit full time to a new project, but it, it's quite a good uh, a good debut, I would say. Um, and um, the goal was to have the nine first sections of the table of contents covered by summer 2021. Um, and we have only six. Yeah, boo. We are slightly beyond schedule. I know, we know. Why? How we lazy? How incom incompetent can we be? And you will, you will understand. But first, let me let me tell you about um, why we got into documentation. First, the altruist reasons. Um, first, good documentation takes some weight off the shoulders of user support. Um, and that's quite obvious. Um, if people uh, harass the user support for technical questions, um, the user support um, are not doing any, uh, something else. So, yeah you want to make sure that most of the questions can be handled uh, by the docs so that people don't have to ask for help. Uh, the second reason is it makes sure documentation makes sure uh, that time and energy is not spent twice uh, if someone solve an issue, solves an issue uh, that issue should be considered solved for everyone else um, and you don't want to have people reinvent the wheel every time they find a solution to a problem. Um, and a third reason which is not often not often thought of is good documentation equalizes opportunities. Why? Because if you are not lucky enough to talk to the most knowledgeable knowledgeable person around, think just of, of people living abroad in um, linguistic communities which are not 
tightly connected to the, the English speaking world. Um, if that is your case, you are worse off everybody else who are who is lucky enough to know someone around who can help. So we want to make sure that no one is left behind um, and that that and for that documentation is really important. Um, how did we get into documentation now? The egoistic reasons, well, documenting something tests your understanding of it. Um, so you really dig into details and you find unsuspected things that you had not thought of and that's a very pleasant experience. And committing to documentation is a nice incentive for learning. And what I mean by that is uh, on that point, I can't speak for Attila, but for myself, uh, I almost didn't know anything. Uh, and I started writing docs not because I knew, but because I wanted to know. And that's something um, that's very rewarding um, for me. Let's talk about Tumbleweed, because Tumbleweed, I mean, everyone around the OpenSUSE ecosystem knows more or less than Leap is well covered just because it's the spring off from um, SLE, so you gotta expect you have some solid and healthy documentation available. Uh, but Tumbleweed, it's it's another it's another story. Um, Tumbleweed, by the way, takes some understanding to be taken advantage of. Um, so, what does the documentation look like for people interested in Tumbleweed? Uh, are they going to turn to the official LEAP reference manuals? No. N or at least not only, because the LEAP reference manuals do not talk about tumbleweed at all. I mean, the, it's not just the word that is not mentioned, um, it's just that um, all the tumbleweed specific workflow and tools uh, are either not talked about at all or talked about only with leap in mind so this falls short for people interested in tumbleweed because the workflow between rolling and fixed point release is so different uh, so what are gonna uh, what are they gonna do turn to open to the wikis perhaps the SDP no cigar um, there is no explicit and or visible maintainership so you can't trust anything that's because you don't know who's vouching for what you're reading who is your safeguard um, and that um, enables me to make a broader point about um, wikis um, that's the wikis are a trap part I mentioned earlier so in wikis you have an absolute absence of visible maintainership so that means the truth is contaminated with uncertainty and let me unpack this for you so how are you gonna tell up-to-date and factually correct information from outdated or incorrect it's not an easy task at all um, you cannot tell a part up-to-date and factually correct from what is not um, so the user has no rational option but to try and pray or maybe worse go to Fedora or sleep with Ubuntu but no matter what um, it, it it just it just um, doesn't do the job so wikis work just like github repositories only when you can keep your promise honor the contract with the user that contents are curated and maintained if you cannot keep your promise don't make it make things appear as if you were able to keep it uh, don't fake it you can't so say you can't all right at this point I anticipate some objections and replies so what about Wikipedia isn't Wikipedia um, reliable sometimes sure but they pay people uh, so that doesn't count um, and what about ARC well ARC what about them they use wiki categories of, as github repos and most of the contents are written by 
an extremely thin layer of expert contributors, just like GitHub repos. So we, in the doc docs team, we use GitHub to make explicit this contract between maintainers and users that others distros live implicit. And the contract um, goes as follows. Dear user, we hereby promise that everything you'll find is factually correct or recommended for as long as we offer it. So we embrace the fact that Good Docs is like a wet market. It's going to be fresh and you have people to serve you. You don't help yourself with your, sticking feet, with your sticky fingers. All right. Joke aside, uh, let's turn to the types of questions we have to address um, and have to anticipate when writing the docs for Tumbleweed. So first you have um, questions about facts. Uh, shall I pick X or Y in the installer? So shall I pick option X or option Y if I want to do Z? Uh, if I'm booting to a black screen, how to use an NVIDIA um, GPU, how to offload my video output to NVIDIA, um, how do I get software X, how do I update or upgrade, etc. Those are matter of facts. But also, and that is going way beyond what you could possibly find in Leap uh, documentation, there are matters of recommendation. And these are at the front stage of questions such as how often should I update? Should I update? Let me emphasize this. How often uh, how should I solve conflicts between dependencies? Should I use Zipper or Yoast? Zipper or DNF? Tool X or Tool Y? So documenting uh, Tumbleweed cannot do away with recommendations. We have to not only move away from the wikis onto something more sustainable such, such, such as uh, yeah a maintainer centric repo such as what you can find on github uh, but also we have to take on board recommendation best practices things that you should do not just thing that serve a certain instrumental purpose or that just meet certain certain um, certain facts actually so the takeaway is with Tumbleweed, you have advanced users, not just advanced users, but even if they are not advanced users, they are interested. Um, they are pushing their system and they are questioning their, their defaults. Um, and you can't meet these people, meet their aspiration just with technical facts. Um, in other words, Tumbleweed appeal to people eager to learn and to tinker with their system so good docs are required to honor the promise that the risks that they're taking by using tumbleweed are worth taking alright so let's talk about the obstacles we we had to and still have to overcome um, just just imagine for a second you're a user and you have problems with NVIDIA because guess what? Uh, people have problem with NVIDIA. And that's very surprising, isn't it? So where should where should these people turn to? Well, uh, they can turn to Leap official documentation, to the wikis, they can go to the forums and they can check out our friendly gecko at OpenSUSE. Uh, dash guide, very friendly person, very uh, knowledgeable user, but point is, you have a lot of different sources, and too many sources giving similar but slightly different tips published at different times. We don't want to control what third parties say about our beloved distribution, so we have to either work with them or to compete with them, so that, well, we just provide the best docs, so no need for other sources. But we can't compete with them unless we present a single source of truth and recommendations to the users, which means, guess what? Removing redundancies. That means deleting or recycling in more 
um, pleasant words, the work of other past contributors. And that's taking us a lot of time, and that's one of the reasons why we are a bit um, beyond schedule as far as our uh, objectives go. So another reason is maintainership, uh, sorry, um, meeting our own reviewing ambitions um, is a tall order. Um, j just to make things concrete, uh, just check out our reviewing process. Whenever we have a new submission, first we review the structure and the contents of the, of the text and then the language, the style and the punctuation. Absolutely boring and I mean, very enticing and compelling activity, yet uh, that's something we can do ourselves. We are uh, the only cooks in the kitchen, everything is, is goes nice and smooth. What about the, the two other things we gotta do? Well, we gotta re make sure that we have peer reviewing on the contents. So we gotta review again the structure and the contents, we gotta review again the language, the style, the punctuation, and I mean, to do these two last steps, we need to turn to experienced and knowledgeable contributors. And even when they are flawless for technical facts, don't always agree to making recommendations. That is, in other words, they are not fully, totally convinced by the past couple of slides I've just uh, offered to you. So we need to accommodate this. Um, we need to have them, we need to push them, so to speak, uh, to go a little bit beyond the facts and, and be a little bit more ambitious, I mean, less humble and less shy and put some, some realistic recommendation on the table. So either that, either the, then, I mean, they're a little bit shy or they don't have time to explore recent use cases so as to make an informed recommendation. So that's the problem. We're working, we're working on the docs at a time when there is no, not really a tradition of using such a reviewing process because, I mean, the community, the, the, the project, so to speak, is not used to this maintainer-centric um, model we're using here. And finally, a third, the third reason why we're a little bit um, beyond schedule is um, the technology is more integrated than the people. And by this, I mean you have very complex tools such as Yest, Zipper, Snapper, uh, which um, stand at the core of the OpenSUSE user experience, and they are very neatly integrated. Nothing, nothing to say about this. Um, but you can't say s the same thing about the people that work on them. On them, that means there is a mismatch between the level of integration of these tools on the one hand, and the level of integration or of coordination um, of the people that maintain them. It's not a criticism; it's bound to happen in a world where you need to specialize. Uh, but what would be really helpful to us would be to have specific time windows or platforms where we can um, um, yeah, go to potential reviewers and I mean first identify them and then go to them and ask them if, you, if they would review stuff. There's Progress, there's Pager, two platforms. The first one is, is has been around for a couple of time already. Pager is m migrating uh, surely, but um, yeah, uh, we're migrating to Pager, and um, so that should mitigate mitigate the problem. That um, yeah, that's not uh, that might not be sufficient. All right, saving the world. Time for some silver linings. After all these obstacles and these pain um, we've been through, <laughs> so um, first. A good step in the in the right direction. Um, we've been able to um, assemble a Telegram bot that is supposed to make it easier for people to access the documentation, even from within the context of a live conversation um, when they're asking for um, 
user support. So for instance, you have this user here. Um, I mean, I could just do a PDFR snapshot lol. I have actually been meaning to reacquaint myself with Snapper. Nice words, by the way. Good uh, English vocabulary. Um, and boom, answer. Uh, slash doc snapper and you have the bot um, sending uh, a list of links each of which is um, relevant with respect to snapper um, so it's searching the docs with using snapper as a keyword and um, apparently the, the user who asked the question seems to be satisfied um, <laughs> And so yeah, you 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 make user support a much more lean and simple experience if you can funnel people that have specific questions uh, to specific answers uh, available from the docs. And another thing that's been on my mind for some month uh, now is we could imagine that. Um, we um, we basically uh, create new dynamics within the community to help not only documentation but also accessing doc documentation and reviewing documentation. So it's just just a game of 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 thinking here. Three conditions that describe this this ideal uh, situation. I have in mind. So imagine that whenever a user finds a gappy or an outdated or incorrect contents, um, they can report them to the documentation team through a simple proce procedure. So basically, uh, you'd imagine um, a, um, a button on a web page, uh, a web page that will be serving the documentation. Um, and then another condition would be whenever the docs team needs a reviewer they can broadcast their requirements to a waiting room of people interested in reviewing so people who have made themselves available to reviewing and these people can pick up the tasks they're interested in the most as they come so it's like a pipeline at one end of the pipeline uh, you put um, contents that uh, needs to be reviewed and on the on the other hand of the pipeline, you have um, knowledgeable people that can uh, pick up the task and send back. And the third conditions would be: uh, imagine that all contributions, be it writing the docs or be it reviewing it, um, is easy to trace to their authors and to reference from a curricular. So, people that help us on GitHub. Um, people that review the docs now or in the ideal scenario I'm painting at both strokes um, all these contributions are traceable imagine how powerful an incentive that could be to people that are just not um, I mean to, to people that would like um, to make use of their open source experience um, on a more um, professional um, level. Um, so with these three conditions met you would have um, a situation where um, contributing would be even more rewarding to to everyone actually. It would be so the individual contributors would win more could because their contribution would be more uh, directly actionable. Um, you would have reviewers that would also win in the sense that um, they could directly have some impact on the quality of the documentation about the packages and uh, the, um, the software that they themselves make. So they would have more control and they would be able to have more. It would also act as a sort of feedback, if you will, because, um, I mean, the type of answers you have to 
the type of questions you have to answer gives you a, a clue as to what problems people have downstream. Um, and also the end user would, would it would be just as easy as using a wiki to report and to uh, signal some, some, some shortcoming. So yeah, that's that's a scenario I think is is we're not quite here yet, um, but we are heading in the right direction. So, conclusion: um, the documentation is a wild beast, but it's also a very precious one. It's like a precious um, navigational instrument. It helps a community know know where it's heading and it helps it remember well, where it comes from because it embodies a particular history and a particular tradition so it's part of our DNA so to speak uh, it, 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 yeah, it, it, it expresses the gene of the community um, in a particular way so just for that it's, it's a beautiful thing and used in conjunction with good feedback mechanism like the end of the year survey we're going to talk about um, later today it makes for one of the most beautiful place you can contribute in OpenSUSE. And that's it. Thanks for your attention. And don't forget to check out our repository, our Telegram group. And also, if you want to um, read these slides at your own pace, um, you can do so uh, from my uh, GitHub repository. See you later. Thanks a lot.